welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. <clears throat> In this video, we'll be exploring the upcoming first quarter moon phase, exact on April 12th at about, 12, about noon on Friday. If you're on the west coast of the US, give or take a couple hours, depending on where you are in the world. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Bear River. I'm the intersectional astrologer and Reiki master of Psyche and Soul Astrology. Now, it's my personal mission to help you remain grounded and empowered while you accelerate your growth. And to do that each week, I create at least one video outlining the upcoming astrological transits and leaving you with a tangible takeaway at the end of the video, something like a question of the week or a challenge of the week to help you work practically with the energies present so that you can use them to your best advantage in pursuing your own personal work and mission. So with that being said, let's jump right in. With this chart up here, there's really just one or two things to notice. Uh, whether you are a longtime student or a practitioner of astrology, or whether you are new, it's pretty obvious up at the top of the chart, there's a lot of stuff. And then right along that horizontal line, there is the moon. And so I'm gonna pop the chart down. We'll really just focus on that, what that means for you and everyone else, and how to work with those energies over the course of this weekend and up until the full moon coming up in the middle of the month. Now, <clears throat> the big thing to notice here, of course, is that the sun and the moon are square. That's what a first quarter square moon is, or third quarter square moon for that matter. Now with the moon in Cancer, a sign that it rules, we're already having a really powerful, intense energy. And there's a few other things that we could talk about. Maybe I'll make a little blog post about the moon wobble that's happening with the moon conjunct the North Node in the sign of Cancer. It means that not only does the moon have a really super strong position, but it also means that the moon rules this chart. For those of you who are returning viewers, you know, I always start with what's on the ascendant, what's ruling the chart, and what does that say about the upcoming week or time period? And with the moon ruling the first quarter moon chart, it means that our emotions are likely to be stronger than our conscious awareness during this particular week of the Aries moon cycle. <clears throat> now with the moon squaring the sun in Aries, the sun is also in a relatively strong position. Now, some of you might be saying, but wait, Bear, I know that the sun rules Leo, and it's in Aries right now. And the sun is what astrologers call exalted in the sign of Aries. So if you think about what the sun does, right? When the sun comes out, the birds and the bees come out. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, the sun in Aries happens at the beginning of springtime. So it's a pretty natural connection between those energies. A pioneering, initiating type of energy, <clears throat> type of fiery energy with the sign Aries and then the sun, which sparks things into fire, sparks things into life. So we have a strong sun with an even stronger moon for this particular quarter moon <laughs> phase. And with the quarter moon phase, we always are presented with a bit of a, what Dane Rudyard called a crisis in action. If you think about the gardening metaphor that a lot of people use, it's just the easiest one. You plant a seed on the new moon, and by the first quarter square moon, that little seed is starting to sprout, or it doesn't. But either way, you're starting to get some feedback from nature, from the universe around you, about how that little seed is doing. And to pull it back out of the metaphor, if you are do any sort of ritual work with the new moon, if you sow intentions for manifestation and things along those lines, then it's the first quarter square moon where you start to get a sense of what is really involved in bringing them to fruition. And along with some other things that are going on this week, you know, I post the video about the, the Jupiter retrograde cycle that's starting on the 9th or the 10th, depending on where you are in the world. There's a lot to be looking at in terms of how are things coming about? What do I have to do in order to manifest the dreams that I have set into motion? So in addition to having the moon squaring the sun, the moon is also opposing Pluto in this chart. Also Saturn, because those two are so close together, which means that, you know, 
just be ready for a serious case of the feels is what I have to say about it in a nutshell. But if you want to go a little bit deeper than that, you know, it's real talk. This weekend is likely to be quite frustrating. You might really be feeling an intense desire for comfort, for safety, for nourishment, for self-care, for being quiet at home and really just being able to with bring your energy in. You know, the moon in Cancer has a rather receptive, grounding, introverted sort of feel. And the sun in Aries, of course, is very much out there, very social, wanting to do stuff, be out in the world and move really quickly, especially since we have Mars, which rules Aries in the sign of Gemini. So there's an extra bit of picking up the pace that's going on. Now with the moon opposing Saturn and Pluto, all of those feelings, wanting to kind of go within so that we can process some really deep, deep material, do that shadow work on an individual level, or kind of run away from reality is one potential, depending on how you use the energy and <clears throat> depending on what's going on for you leading into this first quarter square moon, what types of things you're looking to manifest. The real challenge with feeling all of those self-care, going within, wanting nourishment and comfort, isn't that you're wanting comfort. That's a perfectly fine thing to want. The issue is that you may be simultaneously realizing that there are some real practical things that have to get done if you want to accomplish those dreams and those goals that you've been dreaming about for the past month. So a Real simple example, if you have been busting your butt to get the resources together to really accomplish your dream, whether you're looking to buy your first house or start your own business, you might also be realizing that you, one, need sleep, you need rest, you need rejuvenation, you want to just take a day or two off for yourself and then simultaneously, if you haven't finished them yet, taxes are due on Monday if you're in the States. So there's this just basic juxtaposition of things that seem kind of irreconcilable and I think practically speaking the best thing to do with that energy is to try to do both as difficult as you know seemingly improbable as that may be or as improbable as that may seem so if you're going into this weekend and you are feeling exhausted and tired and really wanting to go within, just like have a day where you don't talk to anyone or where you only talk to those special someones, you know, if you're thinking of, I really want to connect with some friends and have them over for dinner, but I have so much work to do, my recommendation is that you figure out if it really is possible to do both. Definitely honor your needs for sleep, for rest, for water, for nourishing food, for physical self-care and emotional self-care, and also honor the reality that there is a lot of time. Not for every task, but for the most part, when it comes to pursuing those dreams and those big goals, you have time. You do have the time to rest and relax, and more important than that, the rest, the relaxation, the rejuvenation are all necessary components or ingredients in the recipe for success. Now, the only other things that I really want to break down here is that, you know, to, to the extent possible, give yourself a day, if you can, to really be with your feelings. If you've got so many things to juggle that you can't do a whole day, give yourself an hour or half an hour or even just 10 minutes. If you really are pressed for time, you know, you got a long, long list of things that have to get done and deadlines are approaching, then I recommend give yourself just a couple more minutes in the shower or in the bath and be with your feelings as much as possible. <clears throat> Last thing that I'll say before I jump into that tangible takeaway and before the sun disappears <laughs> is that, you know, you might be feeling with, with some of the other things that are going on in this chart, you might be feeling like you should should already be there wherever there is and whatever that should is all about you know it's kind of like a kid that can't wait to grow up you might have a bit of that feeling like i should already have accomplished these things but just like that kid that can't wait to grow up eventually you you grow up into an adult who's like man Youth was great, being a child was fantastic. I don't know why I was so excited to be an adult and have to commute places and have a job and things like that. <laughs> Most importantly, when we're in that mind space, I think, it can be really difficult to see 
what we do have going for us. As we're so deeply focused on wanting to be there already, it brings our present awareness out of what abundance and what blessings we are, we, we are experiencing. <clears throat> And so with that, I will say, you know, to, to wrap up the thoughts around what's going on with this first quarter moon phase. With everything else that's been going on, the end of the Mercury retrograde cycle, the beginning of the Jupiter retrograde cycle, and the really intense, you know, start to the astrological new year with the equinox and now with this moon phase, <clears throat> as much as you can, give yourself permission to give yourself the experience of grace, whatever that means for you. If grace is not quite a thing that feels comfortable to you, then give yourself the opportunity to experience wonder and awe to whatever extent possible. Bring yourself into a state of alignment that lets you really deeply explore and if possible, enjoy your experience of emotions. The biggest thing that I can recommend is to really make space for opposites to coexist, needing to get stuff done and also honoring the, the deep value and the sacredness of choosing to rest, choosing to retreat from the outer world and really focus on what's going on in your inner state and in your inner space. So with that being said, the tangible takeaway is a question of the day. It's one that you could kind of ask yourself each day as we lead into the new, the full moon coming up uh, next week. <clears throat> and that is this. I'll give you two actually. So the first question is, how are you making moves towards your dreams? Just what steps are you taking? What things are you thinking about? How are you making moves towards your dreams? And the second question, if you're not moving towards a specific goal, if you're more just trying to like keep it nice and steady, what feelings are assisting you? Are assisting you in maintaining those goals, in finding that place of equilibrium, if that's what you're looking for? What feelings are assisting you in moving through that process of striving for achieving and maintaining equilibrium. So if you would like to share the answer to your question of the day, feel free to do so down in the comment section below. If you are on social media, Twitter or Instagram, especially feel free to throw up the hashtag armchair astrology or hashtag tangible takeaway. Um, you can at me if you like, throw something up in the stories and let me know. I love to hear how you all are using these videos practically in your day-to-day -day lives and just what's going on with y'all. So feel free to shout me out and shout out your own personal experience. If you if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, smash on that subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you would like to receive these videos as soon as they become available. <clears throat> if you would like a more personalized look at how the moon cycles are affecting you, there are two ways that you can get that information. I do offer private readings. Just drop down in the description box for the booking link or for my website to find out more about that. Or if you are in the Bay Area or will be visiting the Bay Area, May 18th, I will be lecturing with Kay Taylor and Linnea Van Horn for the Organization for Professional Astrology's East Bay Astro Circle special event. I will be lecturing on making the moon work for you. So be sure to check out the link down in the description for that if that is up your alley. And lastly, if you would like to get monthly <clears throat> horoscopes and uh, event updates and the like to your inbox, drop down in the description for the link to my mailing list and subscribe for my monthly newsletter. With that being said, thank you again so very much for taking the time to check out this video. Until we meet again, much love to you and many, many blessings.